Ed Taros was here, what, last week. He told a story. Him and I went to uh, Minnesota by an invitation to a bunch of big wigs. And we were in this millions and millions of dollar home, and we were there, and we were guests. I was a guest to speak, and so we were there. And it was a big deal, boy, all this great, you know, big deal. And so we're sitting there, and all of them were talking and sharing about their areas that they work in social agendas, social things, you know, helping people, feeding people, that kind of thing. And I just sat there and listened. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I'd been doing this uh, way before I came here of that uh, whole arena. I mean, we had a 500-acre farm in Virginia Beach, a 300-acre farm, 350-acre farm in Virginia Beach. We raised cucumbers. We had it for men for the 500-acre. We had it for women for the 350-acre. Uh, and we were feeding people. We were doing all these things before I ever came here. I've been here 35, almost 36 years. In that process, I'm just there, and I'm listening. And they're going on and on and on. And then finally, Ed said, hey, hey excuse me, can I speak? I, I know I'm just a visitor, but this guy here is doing what y'all are talking about. <laughs> you know what the answer was? That's wonderful. That's why we invited you. Thank you for coming, Pastor Pierce. Uh, and let's talk about, and they went. So I looked at some of the guys there and said, let's go. Out the door I went. I took some of the troops with me, and out the door we went. And Hello. Because I've, I've been in so many meetings, saints. I was in a meeting in Texas with all of America's youth guys, all the new young guys coming up. There was just a packed place in Texas at a big convention center. They were packed, and I was part of the big deal, whatever it was. I was the executive board, but a bunch of, okay. And um, these guys were all talking about this and that and this and that, and I, I stopped them, and I said, time out. I said, I'm leaving. Thank you very much. All the guys know me. I know them. And many of them, I gave them their first opportunity to minister at RFK Stadium in 1980. These were, these were young guys that today had grown up, and they were big and famous now, but they, they got their start with me. And uh, I said to them, I said, look, guys, I said, uh, I'm not going where you're going because uh, you, you guys are just theorizing here. You're just talking about a bunch of stuff that you're not even going to do. I left. I went to the room, about 10 guys knocked on my door, came in the room, said, uh, Pastor Bart, listen, we know what you're doing. We know you. Uh, uh, we're, we're glad you said something. We're going home too. Next thing I know, about three days later, I got a note. The whole meeting is canceled. The whole movement is canceled. They're not going there. And the reasons is simple. When you face with people who are theoretically talking about something they're not doing or don't intend to do, it don't take long for that thing to get busted up. Because in the faith movement of being around Christians, it's hard to convince people of something when you've never done it. Paul said it. Show me your faith. I'll show you my faith by my works. My, my performance. I'm not talking about a performance that you can perform to get God to do something or that you can perform to get yourself in God a better way. I'm talking about what I said to you in the beginning, a performance that's based on doing the will of God on the earth. That's a God performance. Can you hear? There is a wide gulf between spiritual understanding and spiritual implementation. I said it again. I want you to get this tonight. How many of you are hearing me? Spiritual understanding requires knowledge, submission, and right questionings. Let, let, let's look at that. We're talking about spiritual understanding I said that as my title so let's talk about the subject of spiritual understanding spiritual understanding requires knowledge submission and right questionings I want you to get that 
If you're going to have spiritual understanding, it's going to require knowledge, knowledge of this book. Come on. And knowledge of having spiritual discernment to know the difference between the spirit of God and the spirit of the world and the soul of man. Come on. Discernment. Knowing if something's wicked, something's not, something is good, something is not good. Come on. That's knowledge, the knowledge of God. Are you listening? And then you have to have a submission. That submission means, I realize, uh, Haja today was telling me on the phone, he said, uh, uh, Bishop, you know, uh, I, I really, really thank you because he said, he watches all the YouTube things that we do. He said, I'm meeting with a group of pastors and they want to join my fellowship. And he said, we're taking communion. And he said, I, I heard you preach on the bread, so I'm going to talk to him about the bread. And he goes, wow, the bread was risen. I got it. You know, he was all excited. And, and, and he said, you know, I have authority because I'm under authority. I mean, he was, you got to understand, he was simplified in it because it was revelation to him. It's different when somebody can quote it like they can quote their social security number, but it don't mean nothing to them. Do you hear that? See, it's one thing for somebody to say, I'm under authority. That's why I have authority. And Haja just says, innocent. He's a pastor in Madagascar, to those of you who might not know. And uh, he's got, uh, this will be his 16th church to plant, the one he's planting now in the city. And uh, uh, it's really an, a, mar a marvelous miracle that uh, this young man has been able to be a part of. God has performed every prophecy, every word that came to this young man is being fulfilled. And he, and he says it out of most humble and most, the most, um, I, I just humble when he says, I, I, I'm under authority. Can you hear that? But we can say terms like that today, and it don't mean anything. That's why, you ever heard somebody say, I love you in the love of the Lord? I, I told people years ago, I used to say, shut up. Don't tell me that. Oh, what do you mean, brother? What's wrong? Well, brother, let me tell you. If I wasn't in the Lord, you wouldn't love me? That's why I just got away from it and said, I like you. It requires knowledge, submission, and right questioning. I mean, you know, we need to ask questions. We're not talking about asking questions because you have an arrogant attitude that you think you're smarter than you really are. I'm talking about asking questions of the Lord. You see, it's easy to play it safe. Hello? A lot of times people won't come to me and ask me a question because they don't want, they're afraid to answer. Or they don't want to ask me a question because they already know the answer. <laughs> I ain't going to ask Bishop. He's too busy. You know, let me tell you something about that. When people say that, that's a trick of Satan and of the flesh. It's Satan that lies to them. It's their flesh that's doing it. The reason they do it is they don't want you to say what they don't want to hear. That's why people come to me and say, you know, uh, we're getting married or, you know, uh, they just, you know, some of them disappear. They lope. <laughs> Hello. You got to ask God questions. You got to look at the Bible with a question, meaning not questioning God like Satan did. Remember the serpent? Did God say? I'm talking about questioning God so that you can understand and have him reveal it because the word I'm leading you to is the word revelation. You're going to have to have divine revelation of the truth. And it's the truth that will set you free. Now, here's the other side. Spiritual understanding requires knowledge, submission, and right questioning. Spiritual implementation, on the other hand, requires wisdom, preparation, dedication, and order. Let's talk about those four words a minute. Spiritual implementation. Hello? How many of you know that um, it, it, it would be, we'd be just having just church, just like, you know, just having church, just regular old, just have church. 
if we didn't have something going on different here that says we're not going to talk about it, we're going to demonstrate it. Hello? I want a girl's house because it's popular. I want to go in the city and do block parties because it's not popular. I want to start a sports league that's going on 41 or 42 years now. I want to start a sports league for kids. Why? Because I don't want to be in the game, and I know me, and I don't want to have to slap somebody. <laughs> now, I'm just being honest with you. When I started it 40-some years ago, my daughter was six years old. She's 47, so we started it in 41. Uh, uh, I mean... 41 years ago. And uh, so I started it out of self-defense. Yes, I wanted it for my kids. Yes, I wanted it for the other kids. But yes, I wanted it for me. <laughs> so that if some parent got up and grabbed his kid by the top of his head, I could stay sanctified. <laughs> Hello. I'm sorry I'm that real, but I'm just being honest. Spiritual implementation requires wisdom. There's wisdom. I just gave it to you. <laughs> wisdom, now, wisdom is always a woman. Go to the Proverbs. Wisdom, she. Wisdom, she. Why is wisdom referred to as a woman? Because you have a soul that's referred to in the feminine gender called suke. And your soul, mind, will, and your emotions is driven by this woman. And you need wisdom to control that woman, your soul. Because when you die and go to heaven, you don't need wisdom. You just need to shut your mouth. <laughs> and you would. Just the fear or just the sen sense that you made it. <laughs> wisdom. You don't need wisdom in heaven. You need wisdom on the earth. And you don't need spiritual wisdom. Because saints, the, the Bible says, Jesus said that, that spirit's willing. The flesh is the one that's weak. She needs wisdom. That's real good. Thank you. Now, spiritual implementation, implementation requires wisdom, and it requires preparation. Preparation. Hello. That means if you're going to spiritually implement something in your life, you've got to get prepared. What I don't like, and I say it, and I'm around it a lot, and I don't like people that aren't prepared. Hello. I'm prepared. When I go on a meeting, I'm prepared. I'm meeting with a group on Tuesday night. We just discovered by doing the math that I spent 39 or almost 40 hours for eight hours with them. I spent 39 and a half, almost 40 hours studying to spend eight hours with them. When you speak, you better have more prayer time than you do pulpit time. If you don't, shut up. You haven't got anything that anybody needs to hear. See, that's why I get invited to these conferences. They say, bring Bishop Pierce in, put him at the end. He'll clean up the whole thing. How many of you listening tonight? Spiritual implementation requires wisdom and preparation. You need to get prepared for the day by prayer. That's why tomorrow morning, join me in prayer. You need to get prepared for the things that you're about to do and you're handling. If you're handling anything in this church, you should get prepared so that you can implement what you have been prepared to do. Not wing it. People come up here to sing, go out in the ushers, and work in this children's ministry, and they didn't even think about it till they walked in the door. 
And then they're trying to, you know, whoo, <laughs> impress somebody. What breaks yokes? Your personality? Anointing. We don't know the scripture. You got to understand, saints, it's the scripture you got to quote. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. Not, not, not some personality that you think you can get up there and wing it. Hello? I say to preachers, I've said to plenty. I've said to some here. Get prepared before you come in this pulpit. Get prepared before you speak to the people of God. She'll tell you. How many nights we say, good night, see you. And I've left. I'm up in this lofty chamber of a bedroom that I have as my office. And I'm there crying out to God, help me, Lord. Because I ain't got nothing to say. But if you speak to me, oh God, I will not shut up. Hello. Here's another word that was used. Spiritual implementation requires wisdom, preparation, dedication. Dedication. I mean, you know, you got to be dedicated to the thing that you are uh, trying to implement. Because that means if you don't, you're doing it half-hearted. Hello? If you're not dedicated to what you do and you're murmuring about it, you're complaining about it, you gossip about it, you all talk about it, it's like your job. If you go to work every day and you just cut it down, shoot it down, curse it out, you ought to quit. Help that job get better with you leaving. Hello? Hmm. Dedication. I'm dedicated to God. Dedicated to His we ought to be dedicated to his purpose. Isn't that right? When I go to do something, I want somebody to, to how many of you like to watch football or baseball or golf or some sport, basketball, okay? How many of you like to watch the people who don't care if they win or lose? Frustrating, isn't it? Especially, you know, when they got a big salary. And they get, they get a large check like the Steelers guys. They get these big checks, and they don't even want to come up to the game. Don't even want to play. Don't want to show up. I can't fire them. Jesus. I'd make it so that that contract would never be dissolved, and they would be bound for the rest of their life at being nobody. And when they finally came back to play, they'd sit on the bench. I'm not a coach. Now, spiritual implementation takes one other word, order. Order. I've just, Tuesday nights, I've been teaching a whole thing on order. How important is order? God took chaos and brought order. But let me help you. Order has to happen first before motion takes place. Now, you don't think that is a big deal, but listen to me when I tell you, and I'm going to help you understand it. Order must take place before motion takes place. But most of us today put our mouth or our life in motion and then hope for divine order. Hello? I, I, I'm going to do, this is what I am, and this is what I'm going to do, or this is where I'm going, this is how I'm living, this is it. And we put this motion in there, and we go, oh, yeah, by the way, God, what do you think? Put God's order in your life and let him give you motion. God created man, the earth, brought all the chaos into order, and then he put man up on his feet and said, walk. Motion comes after order, not motion and then order. Here's what happens when you get motion and order second. It's called disorder. When you got motion without order first, it's disorder. Are you listening? Now, there have been many powerful ministries, ministers and ministries, who understood what God wanted of them.
but never quite able to implement what they understood. I know so many today that, they, they, that you know, inner city pastors and guys that shouldn't be pastors, they should quit, they should go sell shul, soul, shoes, something else. But they, they, they're not able to implement what great theoretical great pontifications that they can make about the great mysteries of the kingdom yet they implement nothing they come to me and they tell me they're a bishop bishop of what who how many people you have in your church well i think we've got 15 now you're the bishop of them Come on, saints. Man, we got to understand some of this stuff. We need to stop, stop, stop right now and say, Lord, close the gap. Close it, Lord. Spiritual understanding and my spiritual implementation has to get closer. So what I understand, I can implement.